Hey friend, I want to thank you for joining me today. At Out of the Box Ministries, we believe that a vibrant, powerful experience in the Christian faith is about more than believing that God exists and that Jesus died on the cross so we could one day get to heaven. God is a loving Father and like every good Father, He wants to see His children succeed in all areas of life. But I've gone through aspects of Christianity and a lot of times when we boil it down to just saying a simple prayer or believing a certain doctrine, we rob it of its power. But I was reading the Bible the other day and it says, the Paul was writing to his church and he said, not many of you were influential or powerful when you came to know Jesus. And that word were stuck out to me. You see, it's the understanding that as we come to Jesus, yes, we give him our lives and we have that eternal salvation, but it's also a process where we grow. We grow in wisdom. We grow in power. We grow in influence and impact in the world. In fact, it says about Jesus that he grew in favor with God and man. In the book of Acts, it talks about the church, how they went throughout the world, turning the world upside down with their teaching. And so when we start to realize this, we understand that it's not about saying a prayer or a single moment in time, but it's about beginning a journey where we can learn and grow. And so we learn and grow so that we can grow spiritually and succeed in all areas of life the way our Heavenly Father wants us to. And so I'm glad that we get to be able to, at Out of the Box, create these content and resources to help you grow spiritually and succeed in life. Today, we're gonna to talk about the power of humility. And again, understanding that the Christian faith is not just a weak faith, not just something, a belief that we have, but it's a powerful aspect of a way of living. In fact, in 1 Corinthians 2, 4, it says, Paul says, my message of preaching was not with eloquent, wise, or persuasive words, but with a demonstration of the Spirit's power. Again, in Romans 1, 16, he says, I'm not ashamed of the gospel because it's the power of God for the salvation of man, first for the Jew, then the Gentile. And so there's a powerfulness in the Christian faith when we learn to grasp it in the right way. In our time together, we're gonna look into what humility is and isn't, but also the benefits of humility, that humility fosters and creates wisdom in us. It earns honor and affection, and it builds healthy community, but also it invites God's presence and blessing. We're gonna look into a passage of scripture where Jesus tells a parable on how to practically apply this in Luke chapter 14. But before we do that, I wanna give a shout out. This week's shout out goes out to Ariel. Ariel's a new subscriber on YouTube. And we wanna welcome you to the family, Ariel. We hope that this ministry continues to encourage, inspire, and bless you. And while I'm talking about that, I wanna invite you and encourage you, if you're watching on YouTube, go ahead, click the subscribe button. Click that little bell for notifications. Not only will this ensure that you don't miss a single episode of these powerful messages, these life-changing messages from God's Word, but it also helps because the more subscribers we get, the more likes, the more comments, the more shares, the more YouTube is going to push these messages out to other people who so much need to hear the wisdom of God, this biblical wisdom for life. And so I invite you and encourage you to do that. But more than that, after the message, I would hope that you can go over to outofthebox.org. You can learn more about the ministry, but also there, click subscribe, where you can get email notifications, not only of these videos, but of the other tools, content, and resources we make available to you so you won't miss a thing. And you have the tools needed to grow spiritually and succeed in life. So let's start off our time together by reading Jesus' words found in Luke chapter 14, verses 7 through 11. And he says, When he noticed how the guest picked the places of honor at the table, he told them this parable. When someone invites you to a wedding feast, do not take the place of honor. For a person more distinguished than you may, be, may have been invited. If so, the host who invited both of you will come and say to you, give this person your seat. Then humiliated, you will have to take the least important place. 
But when you are invited, take the lowest place, so that when your host comes, he will say to you, Friend, move up to a better place. Then you will be honored in the presence of all the other guests. For all those who exalt themselves will be humbled, and those who humble themselves will be exalted. I love what verse 11 there says when Jesus says, All those who exalt themselves will be humbled, but those who humble themselves will be exalted. You see, Jesus' teachings are so countercultural, even to us. He, he tells us, you know what, we think it's a dog-eat-dog -dog world, that I need to push my way to the top, I need to get out front. But he says, no, if you exalt yourself, you will be humbled, you will be let, sent low. But if you humble yourself, you will be exalted. That true advancement is found in humbly serving others. And so we learn about this. But as we look into this, I want to start off by giving an understanding of what true humility is. Because I think sometimes we fight it so often in our own soul and in our actions because we're not aware of what humility really is. So I like to start off with understanding of what humility isn't. Humility is not self-deprecation. It's not, you know, cutting yourself down. In fact, in Matthew 22, 39, Jesus declared, the second greatest commandment is this, love your neighbor as yourself. And so while Jesus calls us to be humble, he also calls us to love ourselves and to treat ourselves with love and kindness, even as we would treat other people. So true humility isn't just knocking yourself down, but it's having love for yourself and love for others, just not overextending your love for yourself. But it's also, humility is not a low self-esteem. I love what the psalmist writes in Psalm 139, 14. He says, God, I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. And so humility is not saying, oh, I'm nothing. Oh, I'm just a nobody. It's saying, no, in myself, I am fearfully and wonderfully made. And being okay with that. But, so, but humility is also not this fake humility, this self-promoting sacrifice. And sometimes we see that and it looks humble from the outside. But Jesus talked about that in the Beatitudes on the Sermon on the Mount. And in Matthew 6, 16, he says, When you fast, do not look somber as the hypocrites do. For they disfigure their faces and to show others they are fasting. I tell you, they have already received their reward in full. And he was talking about a lot of the religious people that day. They made it look like they were just miserable in order to try to elevate themselves. And that's not true humility. It's not trying to make this sacrifice so you can say, hey, look at me, and trying to puff yourself up. No, that's not that kind of humility that God wants us to experience, us to observe and enjoy. In fact, you really want to know what humility is like. Humility comes with a confidence. Confidence is quiet and giving, while arrogance is loud and demanding. And so there's a difference. When you're humble, you have a confidence. But when you're arrogant and you lack humility, you're going to be loud and demanding. But let's also look at what the Bible tells us that humility really is. Humility is the willingness to ask and accept help. In Matthew 7, 7, Jesus said, Ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened unto you. And that's so good to understand because sometimes we are so proud and we sound so humble, but we're so proud we think, I don't need anybody else's help. I can do it all by myself. I refuse to ask for anyone to come and assist me. And that is built up by pride. You may say, well, I'm not trying to get anybody else to do for me what I can do myself. But it's an understanding that if you're truly humble, you're humble enough to say, I don't have it all figured out. I don't know everything. And I do need other people in my life. I do need assistance at the proper time. And so true humility is a willingness to ask and accept help. Humility is being vulnerable and open and authentic. Sometimes in pride we try to put on this, this mask and we try to show the world our best, but, in, but true humility is saying, I I'm not perfect and I'm okay with that. And in letting other people in in order to grow. And true humility is pursuing obedience without demanding recognition. At one time, Jesus told a story about the end times, and he says, you know what's going to happen? It's his understanding that when you have a servant, when the servant is done working, he said, you don't sit there and say, oh, here, let me reward you. No, you, you give them their paycheck. 
And a true servant with humility just says, when they're asked to do something extra, they're just saying, it's only my duty. They're not looking for recognition or reward. And so it's that understanding that true humility just pursues obedience, just tries to be helpful without looking for recognition or reward. That's what true humility is like. Last week I talked about ego, and I mentioned that ego is actually fueled by insecurity, but humility is built upon confidence. And so now that we've understood what humility is and isn't, I want to go into the benefits of humility, that how it empowers us to live a kind of influential, impactful life. The first benefit is humility fosters wisdom by creating curiosity. And it's that understanding. We look at Albert Einstein, one of the geniuses, most well-known geniuses of all time. And yet he said it himself, I have no special gift. I am only passionately curious. In fact, he encouraged others by also saying, never lose a holy curiosity. And I love the combination of those two words, a holy curiosity. And it's that understanding when we are humble, we are willing to ask questions. We don't have to try to act like we know everything, that we have all the answers. And when you have true humility, you're saying, listen, I still want to learn. I still want to grow. And you're willing to go to other people who are smarter than you to actually seek out other people with greater wisdom and to ask questions. You don't mind letting people know that you might be ignorant or less educated in certain areas because you keep asking, you keep wanting to know more. You don't put on this mask. In fact, in James 1.5, it says, if any of you lacks wisdom, and the truth is, we're all lacking a little bit of wisdom. The wisest person in the world hasn't figured everything out. So James says, if any of you lacks wisdom, you should ask God, who gives generously to all without finding fault, and it will be given to you. So true humility gives us the opportunity to say, hey, I can learn more. There's more to learn. And they're curious about learning more. And the people who are curious, just like Albert Einstein said, those are the ones who are passionately curious are the ones who end up learning the most and growing in their knowledge and in their wisdom and in their intuition. Never stop learning. Never stop being curious. Never lose a holy curiosity. Humility also earns honor and affection by making others feel valued. That's really what Jesus was talking about in verse 11 of Luke 14. He says, the, those who exalt themselves will be humbled, but those who humble themselves will be exalted. And so when you live a life of honoring others, you're going to actually be honored. Romans 12:10 says, be devoted to one another in love. Honor one another above yourselves. And when you do that, you're actually going to have people want to be around you. When you make others feel good about themselves instead of making everything about you, when you make others feel special, when you point out the value in others, when you're lifting others up and you make that your goal and your ambition, people are going to want to return the favor. People are going to want to exalt you. People are going to want to expose you to new opportunities and introduce you to their friends and to new ways in which you can experience fulfillment. And so humility really allows us to get the love and the honor that we desire when we show love to others, when we show honor to others. In Philippians 2, 3, it says, do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit, but in humility, consider others above yourself. Again, it's that understanding of loving other people, making other people the focus, letting them feel valued and then you will be exalted, you'll be lifted up. You see, here's the thing. When we become proud and arrogant and we make everything about ourselves, we are the one person lifting ourselves up and everyone else is just walking away. But when we humbly try to lift others up and try to encourage and inspire and make every person we come into contact with feel valued, we end up surrounding ourselves with a crowd of people who also want to lift us up. We have a hundred or thousands of people who are there to lift us up. And there are a thousand hands will be able to lift you higher than your own two hands will be able to do it yourself. We like to say in this world, you know, pick yourself up by your bootstraps. But like I said, Jesus's ways are radically different from the culture and the wisdom of this world. He says, no, if you really want to be lifted up, make it your ambition, make it your mission to lift up others, to encourage others, to honor others. That's the benefit of humility. And then you will have others around you when you need to be, and they will lift you up. 
but also humility builds healthy community by attracting and encouraging like behavior. Guess what? You end up attracting the kind of people around you who act like you. I love Ephesians 4.29 and it says, Do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouths, only what is helpful for building others up so that it may benefit those who listen. In other words, when you spend all your time building other people up, you're going to attract the kind of people who are going to build you up. You're going to attract that kind of community of people around you. People who are going to want to be encouraging and inspiring and building others up. And when you have that around you, you end up growing and going farther than you ever could on your own. Ever could on your own self-promotion. You ever could on your own work or your own effort. And so having humility builds the kind of community that makes you get to where you are needed to be. All throughout the scripture, God tells us it's not good to be alone. You'll never get far trying to do it all on your own. You will never make it trying to be the self-made man. Of course, that we know that if you've listen to me at all, says, that's a lie we tell ourselves. I'm self-made. We've all had people speak into our lives. We've all had lucky breaks. We've all had blessings come from outside of ourselves. And so the best way to really experience the most impact that we can, the most success that we can, is to create a healthy community around us. And one of the ways in which we do that is by practicing powerful humility. But also that's this last point I want to get into really what Jesus wants us to know that practicing humility invites God's presence and his blessing. When Jesus said, those who exalt themselves will be humbled and those who humble themselves will be exalted. God exalts the humble. He looks at us and when we are living humbly the way God intended us to, He will promote us. Not just even just other people, not even just our community, but God notices. In fact, in, in Psalm 34, 18, it says, The Lord is near to those who are contrite and He will save the humble of spirit. God is close to the humble. When God looks at someone and says, they, when they act like, I don't need God, I can figure it out all on my own, God will take a step back. But when we humbly say, hey, I'm in need, I am weak, that's when God steps in. That's when God starts working and moving in our favor. Paul said this when he was understanding and coming to grips with his own weaknesses, and he learned that God told him, when you are weak, you are strong. Because God said, my grace is sufficient for you. My strength is made perfect in your weakness. So when we come to God in humility and we confess our weaknesses, we confess our need for Him, He then comes and steps in and moves in powerful ways. He brings about the blessings that we desire and want. Proverbs 10, 22 says, The blessing of the Lord enriches one's life and He adds no toil to it. See, God wants to show us our blessings and pour out blessings on our life. All throughout the scripture, he talks about that. And we receive those blessings when we come humbly to him and say, God, I need you. God, I don't want to do this on my own. God, I can't do this on my own. But when we try to do it all on our own, God will take a step back. And we end up trying to work and toil and trying to make everything happen on our own strength. In fact, I love what it says in Psalm 127 verse 2. He says, God says, in vain you rise up early and work till late, toiling for food to eat. Don't you know the Lord gives blessing and provides for those he loves? And so when we just are humble before God, he steps in and he says he will pour out blessings that enrich our lives so that we don't have to toil. Not that we don't have to work, but he will bless the work of our hands as he's told us throughout scripture. And sometimes when we try to do it without him, we're actually shooting ourselves in the foot. We're limiting ourselves by our own pride and arrogance. And so God wants us to experience the power of humility. But even beyond that, every spiritual blessing in the Christian faith comes down to humility. It comes down to realizing that everything we need, everything we want, everything we desire comes from God. And to have that relationship with God, it all starts with coming to God and confessing our need for Him. In fact, in 1 John 1, 8 and 9, it says, If we claim to be without sin, if we try to arrogantly say, Hey, I'm perfect, I'm good enough, I haven't done anything wrong, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we openly confess our sins to God, he will not only forgive our sins, but He cleanses us from all unrighteousness. Entering into a relationship with God, where God pours out His blessings on you, starts with humbly saying, 
I don't have it all figured out. It starts with humbly confessing to God and to the world, to ourselves and others, that listen, I've made mistakes. I've done things wrong. I I've sinned and, and I've done things that I'm not proud of. And when we do that, God promises that not only will He forgive us, but He will cleanse us. He will empower us to start living in a more healthy, holy way. And, and so I wanna ask you today, have you humbly come to God? Have you experienced His love for you? Have you experienced the confidence that comes with humility of knowing that God is for you, that God is in you, that you are forgiven and that you have eternal life in Him? If you haven't, I wanna just take a moment right now to give you that opportunity. All it requires is confessing, yes, I've made mistakes, I've sinned against God. And believing that God loved you so much, He sent His sinless Son, Jesus Christ, to live a perfect life for you and to die on the cross, taking your punishment. And that on the third day, He was raised again. And that if you choose to follow Him, to invite Him into your heart, to listen to Him and to follow Him, He will give you eternal life, a life of power. And so if you're ready to make that decision today, all I ask you to do is pray this simple prayer with me. Jesus, I need you. I've sinned and I've fallen short of the amazing life you want me to live. I believe that you died on the cross for me. I believe you were raised again. And I invite you into my life. I make you my Lord. I want to humbly come to you and give control over my life and my decisions to you. I want to submit to you that I might do what you want me to do, go where you want me to go. And I receive your forgiveness and your eternal life. I pray this in your name, amen. If you just pray that prayer with sincerity, maybe for the 10th time, maybe for the first time, we'd love to encourage you and pray with you. Simply reach out to us so we can get you some resources to help you grow in this new life, the life of power and humility in Jesus Christ and in the kingdom of God. For all of you, I want to thank you for joining me today. I hope that you were inspired, challenged, and encouraged to live the life God wants you to live in power and humility. And I invite you to join me next week as we talk about how to overcome the trap of looking back with a message titled, Don't Look Back. And until then, remember, Jesus loves you, and so do I. <laughs>